Hey everyone, this week we're attempting to capture a landscape shot directly out of camera with no raw editing. So if you watch my channel regularly, you'll know that I do do a lot of post-processing in my photography workflow. I do a lot of editing in Lightroom and Photoshop. And so today I thought I'd give myself a bit of a challenge and I'm only gonna shoot in JPEG, no raw. And I'm gonna try and get a shot directly out of camera and try and get an equally good shot as I would do if I was editing it, but without doing any of that work. So I've come out today to Bamford Edge. It overlooks Lady Bower Reservoir. It is quite cloudy. There are some breaks in the clouds here and there. I'm hoping some good light is gonna come through. We're approaching golden hour now. I'm gonna head up and talk a little bit more about how I'm gonna set up the camera and how I'm gonna approach this shot and try to get something <laughs> that looks quite good. I am quite nervous because like I said, I do do a lot of editing and it's a bit of a crutch. So it's something I do need to improve on, but we'll see how it goes. And uh, yeah, I'll talk to you a little bit more when I get up there. Right, so here we are on top of Bamford Edge, looking down over Lady Bower. We've got Lady Bower in the centre of the composition, the bridge in the background, the hills, and we have got some nice light coming through now, so I am hopeful I am going to get a decent image. So it is really useful to have a mirrorless camera such as the Z7 for this because you can actually see how your aperture and ISO and exposure compensation and things like that are affecting your image in real time as you change it. Before mirrorless, when we had DSLRs uh, with mirrors inside, all you could really rely on is just looking through the viewfinder and then seeing what came up on screen afterwards. But it really does help to be able to manipulate it like this in real time. Right, so I've set up the camera in a very particular way. And firstly, because we're not shooting in RAW, I've set it so that it's only gonna be shooting in JPEG. And in the Nikon, you would come into the menu, to the top option on the left here, you'd come across, down to image quality, click on image quality, and then from in here, you can click on JPEG. There are different options for JPEG. I'm choosing fine, fine star in fact. That's the best option. Obviously, I'm not capturing RAW, so I want to get the best image possible. So I'm gonna go for Fine Star. And then if we go back in the menu, underneath here, we've got Image Size. So here, I'm choosing the largest size possible. So 8,256 by 5,504 pixels. You might think that by choosing a smaller size, you'd get the benefit of the camera reacting faster and getting more images in a quick burst if you're doing something like wildlife. But actually, in a lot of cases, the camera down samples from the largest size and that takes a bit more processing power. So it's best to choose large anyway. So we're getting some superb light now. I didn't expect this at all. It was really cloudy earlier, but it's really cleared and it's coming through and it's looking great. Another thing that we need to set is the picture control. So when you're shooting in RAW, this is not really applicable because you can kind of change how it looks afterwards. But picture control determines how the, the camera is going to adjust the JPEG and how it's almost going to process it itself. So you've got different options like standard and neutral. I've actually chosen vivid for this. And I'm not sure if that's a mistake or not. When I'm editing, I normally don't go for a very saturated vivid look, but I think I'm trying to compensate <laughs> in some way for the fact that I'm not able to edit. So I'm going for the most, yeah, vivid and colourful image that I can, I think. I might experiment with landscape and neutral and standard as well. 
But right now that's what I've got. So another thing I don't normally think about when I'm actually capturing the shot is white balance. Because you can adjust that afterwards in post-processing when you're shooting with RAW, it's never really an issue when I'm actually shooting in camera, I just set it to auto and just adjust it later. But obviously because I'm shooting in JPEG, I can't do that. So I'm coming into the menu and I'm coming up to the left hand side, the top option, coming across, down to white balance. And you'll see in here you've got different options like direct sunlight, cloudy, you can experiment with those and if your conditions match any of those they might be applicable. But I'm actually coming down to choose colour temperature. So when I press the I button on the back of my camera I can click on that, press down and here I can actually choose the white balance value in Kelvin. So that's K. So I've set this quite warm, I want a really warm sunset look and on the back of the camera at least, I think that's looking okay. One of the problems I've got is that the sky is so bright in contrast with the foreground. Normally with RAW I would edit those separately, so I would apply different parameters to the foreground, the bottom half of the picture and the sky. But obviously I can't do that here, so I do have the graduated filter on here, so I'm just darkening the sky. But to be honest, that's not really strong enough, I would need a stronger one. And really, I'm going to end up with either blown out highlights in the sky, or I'm going to end up with too many blacks in the shadows. So I've got to make a compromise either way. I am experimenting with exposure compensation as well. So on some shots I've been lowering that, some raising it. Like I said, it was really bright with the sunlight coming through the sky before and I didn't want to blow out those highlights so I was lowering the exposure compensation just a bit. It's probably going to make the foreground bottom half of the image a bit dark but we'll see. But now it's a bit more balanced. The sun, the really bright sun has gone down behind the hill there and um, yeah I can probably just have the exposure compensation set to zero. As far as metering goes I'm using matrix metering. I'm just trusting the camera to kind of work out the best balance of light possible for the exposure. I could use spot metering like I said and I could either aim that at the sky or the foreground and then I might either get the highlights properly exposed or the, the shadows properly exposed but there's no point really, I want a balance and I think Matrix is going to give me the best balance overall. So you'll see I do have the histogram turned on here so I can see if I have got any clipping highlights or shadows at the moment I've got more shadows you see because I've got all of this hill of data on the left hand side here, that's all shadow data. This will be highlights, if I turn up my exposure compensation you see it shifts over to the right. But I'm blowing out the highlights up here if I do that. I might just get one anyway just to see what it looks like. But overall I want a more balanced exposure and I'm probably willing to sacrifice the shadows a bit more than the highlights I think. I'm in aperture priority mode at the moment, I could try going to manual mode and then I can set my exposure time and aperture all manually. Just gives me a little bit more fine tuning to get the exact exposure that I want. So we're more or less done now, the best of the light's gone and I'm going to wrap this up before it gets too dark for me to film. It's been really great tonight, like I said the light was fantastic, I've really enjoyed it. I'm really glad I came out this evening because it's been touch and go for a couple of days, we've had heavy rain, thick cloud, high winds 
and there was just a glimmer of hope with tonight's forecast and I thought I'll chance it and it's been absolutely spectacular so yeah really enjoyed it and I think I've learned something as well from this process and hopefully you'll have seen the shots already throughout the video but I haven't seen them yet I've just seen them on the back of the camera hopefully they have come out good and uh, if there's any more to show you I'll put them on screen now As I said, because you can't rely on all the things that you can normally rely on in post-processing when you're shooting with RAW, I've had to do it all in camera, setting the white balance, the picture control, using the grad filter. There's just so many technical aspects to think about. I think that's really helped. And also it saves you editing afterwards in post-processing. If you've got a lot of images, you're going to save a lot of time doing this. It makes it easier to share. Some cameras you can upload directly from the camera to your phone or the internet. And also it can make the camera work quicker. It doesn't have to process as much information with the RAW files and therefore it can churn out the JPEGs really quickly which is really good for sports photography or wildlife where you need to get a lot of shots off in a quick burst. So that's something to think about and also storage because you're not storing huge RAW files on your computer at home later. So if you found this useful or you enjoyed it in any way please just give me a thumbs up down below that really helps out the channel. If you're a regular watcher and you watch every week, massive thanks for that, really do appreciate it. And if you're new to the channel and you're not yet subscribed and you'd like to do so, you can just click down there on the big red button. And that way you'll stay up to date with everything I'm doing each and every week. There's a new video every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. UK time. So I hope you'll join me next week for the next one. But until then, thanks a lot everyone and bye for now.